Wow, we we had we got shut off for some reason. We got shut off for some reason. We are back. 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 We've been having technical difficulties with our um, uh, internet. internet. We've been having. Uh, I've been trying to get it corrected, and we're constantly having difficulty after difficulty after difficulty after difficulty. Now we are back. I hope you guys will come back in. I hope you guys will come back in. I hope you guys will come back in because we're back. We're back. We're back and better. We're back. We're back. I hope you guys will come back in. It's uh, We've been having technical difficulties with our internet. I'm sorry. We've been having technical difficulties with our internet. Uh, I just called in before I uh, uh, come online. But we're going we to continue. Please hear this. Thank you, Donna Marshall. Thank you, Renee Devonport. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, all of you guys, come on back in, share, tell people we're back in, we're back here, we're back ready, we're going, we're going at it again. There's a word today, and we know that there's something God is trying to say. Thank you, Pastor Joe Tallamore. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much, Renee De uh, Danford. Thank you so much. Now, I want to say this once again. Start sharing again because we are getting shut off. Because our internet, we don't know what is happening with it. We're calling and making sure our, our signal so strong. But that's okay. That's okay. We will not be refused in this season. Amen. We will overcome every obstacle in this season of our life. We will do all that God is 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 declaring that we should do in this season. This is your season as well as ours. Nothing, no hang up, no hiccup, no uh, interruption is going to, listen, listen, no interruption will stop you in this season you will not lose faith in this season you will start again and continue in what god has called you the bible says cast not away your confidence in other words no one can take no obstacle no trial no tribulation no hiccup no interruption can take your confidence so don't you cast it away you stand strong again in the position that God has called you in and watch God do everything in this particular season. This is the right season of your life. Watch him do everything that he promised you. Now, this uplift is called provision at the level of your preparation. I was saying when I got interrupted, if you haven't shared me, share me now, because this is going to be a blessed day of God's uh, power in your life. You are one decision away. You are one thought away. Mm -hmm. You are one prompt away from seeing the windows of he heaven open in your life. Why is this important that you know this? It's because God is not preparing anything for you. God has already prepared already. your life. It is already on standby waiting for you to get in position to unlock everything that's already there. This is not a preparation season for God. God, this is one for you. This is not a preparation season for God. This is one for you. God knew exactly what time you were in, where you would be right now, and what he needed to say to you to unlock your life. Yeah. This is a season that your life will unlock. Hear me? This is a season that God is going to give you a master key to your dream. This is a season that God is going to give you a master key to your dream. There will be many doors unlocked to you inside what God has called you. Different levels that you'll go through constantly. You're going to constantly graduate into other levels now please get over yourself the reason why you got to get over yourself because if you take a moment to try to figure out why and how can God do this because I've gone through so much in my life they told me I would never be they said I couldn't then you're gonna be delayed because you're gonna take some time it's gonna stop that's the only thing that can stop you in this season if you stop and try to figure out why God would do what God God is God he don't have to explain never. to you he <laughs> know what he chose he know whom he chose he yeah. know where you came from, he know what you came come on, through. Come on. He knows all of that. He knows your current situation. He know what the situation gonna be next week. So you get over you, so that you can actually walk in the blessings of God at the level of God. Are you listening to me? Share me, please, because there's other things that God wants to say. He's changing your perspectives on life. This this is why you must have revelation. Whenever God get ready to change your situation, move you into next level, He changes your revelation. Why? Because that is going to determine how you process what you are about to see. Listen, you got to see through the eyes of revelation. Please hear me through the eyes of revelation. You use these physical eyes to see through. They are not what you see with. Mm. You use your physical eyes to see through. They are not what you see with. Mm. They are only there for you to see through. It's with your revelation you see with. Please hear me. Please hear me. The physical eyes is what you, the tool used to see through. Your revelation is what you see with. 
So when I see with my revelation, it automatically changes my situation. That's why right now your situation can absolutely positively change for the better because your revelation is about to be up. Do you hear me? I don't care what level and what title you have behind your name. What we're experiencing in this season, so many people have major titles, but they don't have major revelation. And so now they have a people that follows them and they're limited in their revelation. And so they are causing homes to be limited in their manifestation. But this is the season that God is opening up revelation. He's about to come to your space and to reveal something to you. Are you ready for the revealing? This is a major season that God is going to use the most unlikely people to reveal what he's doing new. Why? Because it's his time to get the glory. No flesh is going to glory in his sight. This is a time of God. So he's using the most unlikely people. He's saying, I'm going to give you provision at the level of your preparation. This is not about what you came from, what you I'm, I'm saying this over and over and over again. This is not about you. This is about God putting super on your little bitty natural and letting people see that he is God because they cannot process him doing it through you. So you, first of all, got to get over yourself and allow God to do what he's trying to do through you. Are you listening to me? Because this is your day of walking for it like you never walked for it before. I'm prophesying to somebody. Your perspective has got to change. Your perspectives have got to change because what God is about to do in your life, here it is, what God is about to do in your life, you don't need to take another moment telling God why you can't do what he has declared over you. You don't need to tell God, you don't need to suggest, please hear me, you don't need to suggest to God that he don't know what he done when he told you what he was going to do. You don't need to tell God what he don't know what he done when he's telling you what he wants you to do. You need to say yes and amen. The moment that you decide that I'm going to say yes to God's call, watch how he sends the angels to strengthen you for the journey. Watch how he gives you supernatural provision to do what he said. Watch how he gives you the information to walk into the next level. Watch how he downloads into you immediately the, 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 the information needed to take the next step. Are you listening to me? Somebody needs to hear this today. You have for too long sit back. And, and seeing through your spiritual eyes that there was a need and you sit back because somebody you thought was more qualified than you because they had a couple of more titles than you had. But I'm here to declare to you that this is your season to move forward. Jesus said something very powerful, very powerful in Matthew chapter 13, verse number 17. I'm off the script, so I might as well say Matthew 13, verse 17. He says, many, 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 many prophets and righteous men desired to know what you know, but it was the Father's choice not to tell them. It was the Father's choice to download it into your life. Yeah. He says, you have to get over yourself because the future is dependent on what he just downloaded in your spirit. Mm -hmm. And the enemy wants you to see yourself less than God sees you. So you won't open up your mouth to speak what God has declared in you. Stop apologizing oh for God. what God has given you to declare. Stop saying, I know that I, this is not my place. This is your place to speak. God has given you, uh, created you for such a time as this. Come forward, prophet, come forward, come forward. Don't be the Gideon after God has declared that you are the mighty man or woman of valor. Don't say it's supposed to be somebody else. Don't declare to God that he don't know who you are. He is the creator because with one side of your mouth, you say God is my creator. He knows all. He's the creator of a destiny. On the other side of your mouth, you say God made a mistake when he called you. Which one is it going to be? Today, choose ye whom you're going to serve. Are you going to serve the God that knows everything about you and let him lead you into your life or you're going to sit back and defer to people that were not chosen for this moment. Gideon says it very clear. Where are all these blessings that you have declared upon me? Because Gideon thought that he's supposed to see them from somebody else and God said they won't happen until you bust the move. Come on. He says, Gideon, they won't happen until you bust the move. I know you think you're the least. I think you come, I know you think you come from the least of tribes but I have chosen you for such a time as this. You won't see the goodness of the Lord 
Lord until you decide that the goodness of the Lord needs to be seen. Listen, listen to me. You won't see the goodness of the Lord until you decide that the goodness of the Lord needs to be seen. God is waiting on you to make a definite decision today. It's going to be a decision of faith because you never seen yourself here. So stop seeing through your physical eyes and just see through them. Mm -hmm. See through uh, with your revelation because God is going to reveal himself, thou mighty man and woman of Vela. I'm speaking to somebody right now. This is going to be a very confusing season because this is a season of deception from the enemy because his only tool against you is to deceive. This is his only tool against you to deceive. Now, what is deception? Deception is bringing a system in that you honor and make you continue to honor that system because it's the only thing that can hold you in place. Please hear what I'm about to say. Please hear what I'm about to say. God is going to reconstruct a mentor base for, I'm prophesying right now. What did this come, come from? On, Pastor. God is about to reconstruct a mentor base because that's been the tool of the enemy to hold you in place. He's about to reconstruct. Please hear me. I am all for mentorship. Please hear me. We all need one. But here's the key to it all. I look at the Elijah, Elisha diagram. The reason why Elisha was always announced as the one that poured the water on the hands of Elijah. This is mean that he was his personal assistant. This is why God hooked him up to Elijah. Not because he needed Elijah's anointing. Because the anointing comes from God. He needed Elijah's uh, application. Please hear this. Please hear this. He needed Elijah's application, not his anointing. Elijah don't have an anointing to give to Elijah because the anointing comes from God. He needs to teach him how to apply what he already possessed. Please hear me. He needed him to learn how to apply what he possessed. And so it's important that when you read the text that Elisha was always uh, 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 announced as the one that poured hot water on the hands of his life, meaning he served him, he was he was a, a disciple of. He learned the way that he trusted God. He learned the way he trusts God. If you have a mentor that don't know how to trust God, I'm sorry, they are not the one to lead you Come into on. your future. Can't do it. Because once it comes time to work something supernatural, the only way you have faith enough to walk into the supernatural is that you saw your mentor do a supernatural act. Come on. This is why Elisha had the faith enough to go and lay on a dead body, mouth to mouth, eye to eye, body to body, is because he saw his mentor. Yes. Go and lay on and get a miracle. Yes, if your God. mentor is not getting miracles, why are you sitting oh under? Really? Are you listening to me? Why are you still sitting really? under what is not teaching you how to expect the supernatural? That's your problem. It's not your anointing. It's not that you don't have the anointing. You have not been in a situation that engages your faith enough to put a demand on what God has put on you. Are you listening to me? This is a different scene. This is why we call it up. Your ask up your ass because you got to have people that are in your life that whenever they see something in your life, they tell you, why are you allowing this to persist when you are in possession of such power? Why are you letting this remain in your life when you are the possessor of God's power? And they have to let you know if they're not letting you know that you are next and you are the voice that needs to speak because God is waiting on your authorization with your voice so he can manifest some things. Somebody needs to hear this today. This is the day of your power. This is the day that you're walking into your next level of blessing. This is confusing. This is a confusing time because you never heard this. You always thought... I can't be the one because I'm 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 just not the one. I'm not you you can't even tell yourself why you're not. The only reason why you think that you are not capable is because you were told by somebody it's not your time. When God it's it's a problem with your prayer life. It's a problem with your prayer life. If you up your prayer life, you'll get more prompts from God and he'll declare to you that it's your time. Too many times you have been on the scene and you needed to stand forth and speak a word, but you deferred and said, I have to call somebody that is capable of speaking in this situation. Why did God allow you to be there? Because he wanted you to declare something. He wanted you to say too many times you are walking away from a situation you and your mentor are disappointed. Mm. 
I'm going to say that again. There's too many times you and a mentor have walked away from a situation disappointed. Why were y'all disappointed? Because you waited for the person you thought possessed the power when you were the person on the scene that had the power. My God. Jesus, let me say it again because this is Matthew 13, 17 because I need you to hear this and I need you to hear this very clear. Matthew 13, 17. Jesus says something very foul. He says, many, 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 many righteous men and prophets desire to know what you know. Now, what he just declared, he says, I'm not taking their title away from them. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you, you should be standing up. I'm not taking their title. I'm the, it's like him saying to you when you are declaring everybody else. He says, I'm not even talking to them right now. I'm not even talking. I'm talking to you. I'm not. This is not. You know. You know how when you when you are saying something to somebody and you know they're gonna get offended by it, you say, "Excuse me, I'm not talking to you right now. I want to focus on them." That's what. That's what the spirit is doing right now. He said, "Excuse me, excuse me. I'm not talking to you right now. I'm talking to them. I'm talking." And that's what Jesus declared to his disciples. He said, "Are y'all sharing me? Please, 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 please. This is a prophetic word today. Somebody need to hear this very clearly because you're about to awaken out of your." Sleep. You've been in a stupor that's put there by some persons that wanted you to be asleep, but God is about to awaken your spirit because you have been destined for right now. This is your season. This is your season. So he said, listen, listen, disciples, I know that you are the least. You are the uh, man. I can unpack that. The reason why they were even with him, why they would quit their job, because every Jewish child wanted to be set up under a scholar, a Messiah to 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 learn the Torah and to be all of that. And when you have been rejected, they it is suggested that every person that w was sent back to work in their father's business was because they could not recite the Torah without without flaw. Mm. If you could recite the Torah without flaw, that means that you were ready to walk into the next level. And if you could not recite the Torah go without flaw, you go home to the business because you're good, but you're not the one that's going to step up into this. And so here it is. Jesus comes on the scene, the right reverend. The, the right rabbi comes on the scene. He's taking all of those that have been rejected by the system. Right. And he says, now you're going to be able to sit under a, a, a mentor that is going to allow you to walk into your life. This is second chance season. And so he's telling his disciples, many prophets, uh, many righteous men, the ones that have rejected you. Uh, now I'm walking in and telling you, I'm going to download something into you that they didn't think that you were good enough to hear. And then the text said he began to rejoice because he prayed to his father. He says, I think you, that you are taking these simple-minded people called uh, simple-minded by other people and you're about to download kingdom into their life and they're about to turn this world upside down. That's why in Acts, it is said the people that have turned the world upside down are here on the scene. Do you know that you have an anointing to turn the world upside down if you will stand forth in that anointing that you currently possess? Not that you're going to get. God has already downloaded. So he says, many prophets, this is Matthew 13, 17, many prophets and righteous men desire to know what you know, but it just wasn't given to them. Get over it. Get over it. Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul? Get over it. I already it got somebody that is going to stand up that is ready to do what I told him to do. That happened to be you. Then he goes over here to Luke chapter 10, verse number 24 and verse number 25. The text says this, that Jesus called his disciples in private. He says, come here. I need to tell you something. He says, don't run out on me now. Come here. He, that's what he's saying to you right now. Come back. Come back here. Come back here. You thought it was over. Come back. Come back. I need to tell you something. Here's what he said. He said to them in private. He says, listen, many prophets and the kings. Ooh, he changed the text. He changed that. Matthew 13, 17, he said, many prophets and righteous men. Right. That was the church. Okay. Prophets and righteous men. Church. Now he says in Luke chapter 24, in private, chapter 25, he goes off and say, many prophets and kings. In other words, this won't just affect the church, what I'm producing. It's going to affect government too. All right. I'm going to put a word in your spirit that is going to be the word that is going to affect your community. Okay. It's going to affect leadership. But I got to have people that are not trying to build themselves a personal kingdom ready to speak because what I'm trying to do is to affect government as well. I need somebody that's going to speak that don't have anything to lose. <laughs> 
I need somebody that's going to speak that don't have anything to lose. I don't need you holding your peace on what I'm about to download because you are here to affect the nation. That's your calling. That's why you got to up your ask. Because if you don't up your ask and you are asking God for something that is limited, God says, I'm not in, even in agreement with that. So we can't even walk together yeah. because I need you to agree with who I created, oh not who you have become. Please hear me. God says he needs you to agree, uh, agree with what he's created and not what you have become. We keep living from what we have become. Uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and 27 says he created us in his image and his likeness. Mm -hmm. That's who he created. Genesis 2 verse 7 said from the dust of the ground God breathed in man's nostril and he became a living soul. Mm -hmm. We've been living from what we became and not what God created. He's about to switch some things. Yeah. He's going to show you what he created mm -hmm. and not what you have become through the trials of life through the tribulations of life you have become something and you've hidden yourself because of what you have become you thought you were not good enough god says i'm gonna open again to you what i created and you're gonna live from your revelation and not your current situation this is why it is so important in this season that you hear this word. You are in recovery right now god has brought you to the point of recovery right now and so please if you don't know who you are and your information is incorrect, when God shows up at your door again with what he always promised you, you're going to declare that he is at the wrong address. Mm. If God shows up at your door again and your thinking has not changed, you're going to declare that's what you call it because I've seen them, they operate in that. God says, I'm at the right door. I need somebody to sign for this package. Oh I need somebody to sign for this package. Write your name on the dotted line and God will define it when it gets in your house. You're going to close the door and he's going to tell you yeah. exactly what I have planned for you in this season. All I suggest is give God a try. Take the dare. Take the, take the initiative. Take the leap of faith this one time. You know, you know, we talked on, on Friday how how when Elijah spoke to the widow woman who 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 was indebted to a lot of things and her legacy was about to be taken, he says, first thing you need to do is go in your house and close the door. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, shut out the neighbor's voices yes. that seen you go through. Shut out the neighbors, shut out the people, shut out all the folk that cannot process you in your next level because I'm going to do a work personally in your house and then I'm going to release you to the rest of the world. Oh, that is fun. First, I'm going to do a personal private work in your house. Then I'm going to release. You're trying to make this uh, uh, exchange public because you want God to declare to a whole lot of people what you've been trying to say and they've been down on you. So you're trying to prove to them. God says the first person I got to prove to is you. I got to get you to fortify your mind in what I call you. And then once you get it. Mm -hmm. Once you get the personal revelation of who you are in me, then you will discover that they don't matter that much. They don't matter. You won't lose your focus in this season trying to reveal something to somebody that have no clue who you are. They'll get it as you go. They'll get it as you go. I want to I wanna, I wanna, I wanna share something real quick. I want to share something real quick. I might shut this thing off early. I have already given somebody something to run with already. Yes, sir, you, have. You, 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 are you ready? Mm -hmm. Are you set? Are you ready to go? But I am always conscious. I am always conscious that you can hear things, but when the enemy comes in with the deception, he's going to remind you and he's got the proper evidence if you are not spiritually grounded to rob you of every word. Let me, let me say it again. This is why Jesus speaks or teaches in the parable of the sower. He says, the emphasis should always be on the ground that the seed is about to hit. Because if the ground that the seed is about to enter is not proper, then the seed will be rejected. And then the enemy will come take the seed. This is why it's important that you understand the ground in which God is sending this seed must be proper. You got to cultivate this ground. You got to let this ground be ready to accept this seed of God. If not, the seed can be powerful and enough to produce a major harvest. But if it don't take root, then you will lose a season. 
If the seed don't take root, then you'll lose a season. I need you to know this because you can get a powerful word and you are not prepared in your heart's ground. Mm -hmm. Then you will miss a powerful harvest in your next season. You would have to live a limited harvest because the seed didn't take proper root. How does this happen, Pastor G? Because you believe that you are good enough to receive 30-fold. When God says, I give in 100, you think you're good enough to receive 60-fold. When God says, I'm trying to give you 100, you might think that you're only good enough for 80-fold. And God says, I'm trying to give you 100. How do I make that determination, Pastor G, based off what I'm going through in my current situation? You say, this season of my life, I haven't been good enough. So I, I, I let some of God's goodness come on me because I don't think I'm good enough for all of God's goodness. I'm going to show you something. When it says 30 60, 100 fold, that was talking about a seed. That was talking about manifestation. It never suggested that God would show up 30, 60. It never said that. God, when he shows up in your life, he can only show up at 100% God. And so when he shows up, if he says, I'm showing up, know that the exchange should be 100. If you expected anything other than 100 when God shows up, then you are underestimating your moment. And now God can't agree with you because he needs hearts that are ready to be 100. This is your season of 100 exchange. Please hear me. This is the season of 100. I don't care what you got to do to put your faith on 100. Come on, do put it. Put it on 100. Yes, sir. I don't care what you got to get over. Prepare your ground for 100 because this harvest is going to be 100. This is the 100 harvest. This is the one that God, this is the one you've been waiting on. And this is the one that Jesus says with expectations, with great expectations, I have desired that we come to this place in this season. Are you listening to me? Get over you because this is the God time of your life. Harvest, 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 harvest shall come into your spade. Now, I guess, uh, let me give an instruction because I don't care how rejoiceful we get. <laughs> there always got to be an instruction. Yes. That's the key to everything. The enemy is so deceptive. He'll send you to the place of instruction and have you shouting and rejoicing and you never hear the instruction. Oh this is the next season of our life. We will not replace results with rejoicing. We will not replace results with rejoicing. I don't care how much you dance like David danced. You must to ha you're going to have to make it a, a, a emphasis that if I'm a dance like David dance, I'm going to accomplish what David accomplished because David had already set up his festival of praise right. when he went down the first time to get the, the, the ark from Shalom. But he didn't follow the directions of God. And anytime God has promised and I don't follow his specific direction and order, there will be death in the camp. So this is why Uzzah died because David had a good intention. He was ready to dance. He had the, the dance floor already down. <laughs> when I get back, we're going to dance, dance, on, dance. But he did not follow the proper instruction. So now, because you didn't follow the proper instruction, even though you had a blessed idea, somebody going to die because it's all about God meticulous. God is very meticulous in the way that he wants his task performed. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking to somebody. You're going to have to go back again and say, now let me make sure that I'm following the instructions in this season because I can't have the results I had in my past season. I know God spoke to me. Here's what God is saying to you. Yes, I spoke and I spoke very clear, but the application is where we had the problem. You didn't do it like I wanted you to do it. You done it like they did it. And I can't have you doing it like they did it because I can't have, I can't have you getting what they got. All right. Please have you getting what they got this is a different season so the application can come through the instructions of god that's why when god announces his blessings upon your life the next thing he do is let me instruct you on how to maximize what i just said i gave you the blessing because i wanted you to be excited enough to expect it to happen now you are in excitement, let me give you the instruction on how to really execute what I promise you that I can do. Are you here with me? And so here it is. This is a volatile season. You're going to hear people say a lot of things to you because right now you are in a situation. 
you're in a situation. I need somebody to hear this. You need to share this because somebody in your space right now is perhaps it's you, but there's somebody right now you're close to that is going through some horrific things. Uh, uh, they've been talked about, they've been lied on, and they think that God is mad at them. It's an indictment against them. I need to give you this instruction. I need you to know. I need preachers in here because sometimes our doctrine is so detrimental that when God speaks something brand new, we run. I was teaching yesterday, as she said, in Acts chapter 17, when Paul comes into Mars Hill, he, he recognizes there's some people having church. They having devotions. They got they got they got great word. They got philosophers there. They want to know new things. They ever learning but never coming into the knowledge of the truth. They he says, I see you have a church. I see the robes, I see the choir singing, I see all of that. Praise team is wonderful. I see all of this. I see the devotions. He says, but I see something that perhaps you don't recognize. You got an inscription that says to the unknown God. How can you have church like this and then don't know who God is? How can you have that inscription when you're having prolific church? And, <laughs> and so he says to the unknown God, he says, let me explain to you. Let me explain to you. Let me explain to you. So when I read the text, I thought that to the unknown God meant that they never knew God. And the Lord had to explain to me, that's not saying that they never knew me. Mm -hmm. It's saying that I have shifted and they didn't shift with me. Now we become strangers to one another because they are so accustomed to having what they've always had. Mm -hmm. When I done shifted some things, now they think, oh, this is crazy. What is this? This is not what we sing. This is not what we do. Mm -hmm. We're having devotion. But now God has left the building. Mm -hmm. Has God left your building? That does not mean that God is trying to leave you. He's just telling you to leave the building. Come on. Come on. Leave the space that you're in. Now listen to me. Listen to me very good. I am not. I'm a pastor of a church, an assembly. So I'm not against the assembly. I am saying to you again, again, if you're going to have a mentor that you call your mentor, they have got to be in expectancy of something supernatural. Elisha only poured hands on the on the pour water on the hands of Elijah because he was there to learn how to operate in the next level. Mm -hmm. I just can't make anybody my people because if you are not operating in the level that God is calling me to, then we're gonna have a problem and I'm gonna make concessions for you constantly. I'm gonna come to your house to keep explaining to you why God did such a strange move. <laughs> God did something strange. Why? Uh, God didn't tell me that. I'm sorry. Many prophets and righteous men, he said he wouldn't say. I don't need to be explained. I'm delaying a supernatural intervention because I'm here trying to explain to you and your mind can't process what God said. Let me move on because there are some of you right now that are, 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 are suffering some things right now. Here it is. You're going through some things. You're seeing some things leave. You're seeing some things dying. You're seeing some things falling off. Please hear me. Please hear me. This is a blessing from the Lord. And when you see these things happening, and they will because God is the only one that really know what to eliminate at the right time. You say, not that, Lord. He said, yes, that. Not that. You'll say, not that, Lord. He'll say, yeah, yes, that. You'll tell him to take away that. And he says, no, that's need to be staying mm. because you don't know my mind. You don't know what I'm up to. And so, and so, and so, as I was reading this, something dropped in my spirit just before I come on lunchtime up there because, you know, I had, I'm doing provision at the level of preparation part two. And so I was going to go in there. But this God emphasized that there will be people here today that are in this situation right now. He's shifting them so drastically and he don't want you to be out on the island trying to figure out what is going on with me mm -hmm. when people that I thought should be a part of the process has now been eliminated. Wow. He says, I'm moving you very quick. Mm. Now, now here's tech, here's tech, here's tech. And he creates scenarios to define those people. He creates scenarios to define those people. Uh, uh, John chapter 11, very powerful, powerful best scripture. I've, I've taught this. You probably heard it a thousand times. I want to unpack it because I need you to see this very clearly. I want you to see this very clearly. This is the story of Lazarus. Now, the text stars out said, now a certain man was sick. Uh -huh. Certain man had a problem. This this man is, is a problem. Everybody knows it. The, the text tell you that everybody, this is a publicized that this man's got a problem. And so it says a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and his sister Martha. Here, here's what the text said. It said, it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was uh, sick. Check this out. Third verse says, Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, Lord, they're praying in a sense, Lord, listen to what they said. He whom thou loveth 
is sick. Now, notice what text just said. Now, here it is. Mary done sowed seeds into the, uh, into, the, into the life of Jesus. So she's got seed. That's proper. It's in place. Now, notice this. Uh, she sends and they send a message to Jesus. They always had exchanges with Jesus and they were great givers. I need you to see this because great givers go through things. As a matter of fact, because you have given your seed, it's going to allow greatness in this exchange. And so God always will make things die when your place of currency right now that you are is not conducive to what your seed is about to produce. <laughs> He's got to make some things die because you won't make this decision to move. So he says, I got to send a dilemma or a calamity to your life so that you can get this message that it's time for that to go. Mm. It's time for them to leave. Now, notice what the text says. The text says uh, she's already sown seed into the life of Jesus. And then they send a message to Jesus saying that the one that you love, not, not the one that you hate, not the one that you had a problem out of Jesus, but the one that you love has got a challenge in their life right now. It's a public challenge. Now, here's what the text says. And here's what I need you to know. Those of you right now that's going through a public challenge, you done sowed your seed. And, and, and you might perhaps, because the enemy is suggesting and your friends that don't know what's going on is suggesting that God has got a problem with you because you are going through a season of your life. Don't tell me that you don't get to that place where you start questioning God because you're going through a couple of things because you got people saying you need to check your life. But they don't know that I'm in this current dilemma because of my life. Oh my God. God is currently doing something and he's doing it publicly so that when he does what he do, then everybody publicly going to see it Come and they're going to know that God is God. Now, look what the text said. The one that you love, you have, have, have believed that since you are going through, God has turned his back on you. That is a trick and a lie of the enemy. Please hear me. The one that you love, Jesus, Lazarus is sick. You need to get over here right now. Oh, this is powerful. The Bible says that Jesus decided he going to go in another direction. Listen to me right now. Those, those of you right now that are currently in the position for greater to come, first thing, God, first thing God has to do is have to kill the old things because you're a hoarder. You got too many things in place. You believe the things that you got in place are the right things to be in place. Mm. And God says, I can't put the right thing in place until I get rid of that good thing you got in place. Wow. And so I have to remove some stuff to position you to say, yes, I need you now. And so here it is. He's positioned in the family of Lazarus so that they can say, we need a visitation. We need a visitation. You need a visitation from God right now. And he's about to show up. But he says, I cannot come into your space because I don't agree with what you have in your space. Mm. <laughs> I need to get rid of some things. This is not an indictment on your life. This is, as a matter of fact, to prove my love for you. I got to show you this because because it's so many times we think that I've sown seed. That means that exempt me from going through some things. Mary had sown seed, a personal seed. Check this out. Lazarus is the one that he loves, but he still delayed his coming. Now, listen, the delays of life is not because God has denied you. He's prepping you for something greater than what you currently are able to process or to handle. Mm. Fourth verse. Let me read the fourth verse. I don't have that much time. What's that? Oh, my God. Time mm -hmm. flies. Man. But fourth verse says, when Jesus heard that, notice, it don't mean that he, ain't, he didn't hear. And when Jesus heard that, he heard that the one that he loved died, the sister, the brother of somebody that has sown the seed. When he heard that, check what the text said. Check what the text said. He said, he said, this calamity, this challenge, what they are going through is not unto death. Listen, listen, listen. It is not unto death, but for the glory of God. What you are currently going through right now is not unto death. But for, listen to the, but for the glory of God, that the Son of Man might be glorified thereby. Listen to what he just said. He's actually announcing to the family of Lazarus that what you are going through is about to bring glory to your house. All right. Or in other words, as we said in church, there will be glory after this. If you go head on and accept that what God is doing is for my 
good, then he says, we're going to get through this process. Don't try to hide it. Don't let people tell you that God is against you because he has caused you to publicly go through a couple of dilemmas. As a matter of fact, there are people that don't know who you are and what you are called to. They don't understand the reason why you are going through this is because of your positioning in God. God had to announce who's next. How does he announce who's next when you don't have no reputation? Mm. Well, he puts you on a pedestal of his choice. Come on. To show and to let everybody to think that they got the power to stop you. He says, I'll go and kill you. <laughs> I'll go head on. Because I can't let this be your demise as I bring you forward. I'll go head on and take you out. Please. Please hear me. Please hear me. I'll go ahead and take this. Now, when your death is a purposeful death, God will delay his coming. All right. I'm going to say that once again. When your death is a purposeful death, God will always delay his coming. Why? Because I got to put you in a place where you die in the public and I leave you out there because I want them to start a lot of conversations about you. I need them to start. Listen. Listen, whenever you are jumping off or introducing something, you start publicizing. If you want people to be aware of who you are, when you're, especially when you're coming from nowhere, you start putting your brochures out. And you want people to come to your page or wherever you advertise to see what you're doing. Nobody is, is, is as good as God is to announce somebody. He says... If you want people to talk about you, give them something juicy to talk about. And I'll create a dilemma in your life where people that would, in normal circumstance, not pay you any attention. Somebody need to hear me. I'll publicize you because just as you were in obscurity the day before, I know how to put you on front page tomorrow. Mm. Trust me in this process. So if, if your debt is a purposeful debt... Listen to me. He will delay his coming. There'll be many days you think that he ain't paying you no attention. You'll be there'll be many days that you think I'm the one that you love and you're doing me like this. There'll be many days you'll say I've sown a seed and I still see no intervention from God. He says, "Hold your horses, Rangers, because I am on the way." Somebody need to know this. God is on the way. He's about to do something in you. But before he can bust the move, he says, I've got to get rid of some stuff that won't allow you to grow at 100 fold. Right. You're going to accept the 30. Mm. You're going to accept the 60. But I'm trying to give you a 100 percent exchange. So there's some things that I need to build something in you. You're going to have to trust me while you're going through this season. You're going to have to trust me while you're going through this season. Now, the text says, now here it is, Jesus. Uh, who, 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 this is so powerful. Jesus is actually using this experience to introduce himself as well. This is this is very powerful. The Bible says in Luke chapter ten that he 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 called other disciples, other seventies, to send them out to the places for, uh, at which he would show up at. Mm -hmm. So now God is using your death to prove something. Now listen, listen to what the text said. And Jesus heard that he said, "This sickness is not in death, but to the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby." In other words, I'm not glorified in this area. So let me use Lazarus' death to bring me in because this is going to be an exchange where the Son is going to be seen. In other words, what you are going through right now is an introduction of you, but the big picture is it's an introductory of God. Can God use you to introduce himself? Mm -hmm. That's all. You are being, you are a tool right now being used by God. It don't feel good. It don't look good. But it's all good. Because it's all God. Everything. You got to know this. Everything that you're going through. So here it is. Verse 15. I'm going to scan through this. Can't do the whole text. I'm going to scan through this. There's some interesting language in here. I suggest you leave, read this book, uh, John chapter 11, uh, uh, this death of Lazarus. Because Jesus says something powerful. And sometimes we skip over this stuff. The ninth verse says this. And Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If a man walk in the day, he stumbleth not because he seeth the light of this world. You know what that, actually what they're saying? I, I need to unpack that. I know I do because it just dropped in my spirit that I need to unpack that. So, so when Jesus comes to this territory, his disciples say, you know, you're not supposed to be here because they're seeking your life. There's some high priests.
Caiaphas and them want you because you're doing too much uh, good work that they are not privy to. They're trying mm -hmm. to figure out where this power will come from. Now, we're the high priest, and they're afraid Caesar, the government, is going to come take their space because they don't have the power to do a supernatural intervention. And so they said, they're plotting kill you, Jesus. Why are you here when you know there's a hit on your life, Jesus? Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus says, is there not 12 hours in day? What is he saying? He's suggesting something to you and to me through this text. He's saying to you, if you're on purpose and in God's purpose on your life, if he sent you here to work, I don't care what devil, I don't care who it is that's against you, uh -huh. they can't stop what you've been sanctioned to mm -hmm. do. Let them talk. The talk will now become a publication of who you are because the miracles are going to happen in your life. That's what he's announcing to his disciples. When you see this, everybody mm -hmm. that's against me, they going to see this. <laughs> so I had to be here because I wanted to work a miracle in the presence of an enemy. Uh, that's an announcement right there. That's, that's another announcement. God is going to work his greatest miracle in your life in the presence of an enemy. In the presence of an enemy. <laughs> oh, my God. In the presence of an enemy. That's what that's what Proverbs says, right? Uh, 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 thou prepareth a table before me. Listen, it. the table is prepared before me in the presence of an enemy. Thou anointed my head with oil. Let's break the text down. Because oh, no. here I go. <laughs> I'm into the text now. Let, let's, listen, I want to go from the in the presence of an enemy. Let's start there. In the presence of an enemy, thou anointed my head with oil. In other words, if the enemy is not present, he's probably not downloading the ideal for your future. The enemy got to be there. So he, he says, the enemies are here because they are invited. Mm -hmm. Don't fight with the enemy. <laughs> Let them say, listen, listen, listen. And, 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 and then he said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Because the disciples couldn't get what he was saying. He says, this death is for the glory of God. Let, let him, let, let him, I know I seem like I'm delaying, but there's something working out. Oh, there's something that's working. This thing is working. This thing is working. And then the 15th verse said, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. In other words, you don't see what I see. Physically, it looks totally uh, 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 over with. But in the spirit realm, Jesus said, I'm looking in the spirit. I'm in the spirit realm. He says, and I am glad for your sake that I was not there. To the intent, listen, to the intent, ye may believe, nevertheless, let us go unto him. He's just announced to the disciples. Everything that you think is impossible and over with, mm -hmm. it's actually a detailed plan. Mm. It's the intent. Of God that you be right here, right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not lost in your situation. Mm -hmm. I'm not. No. I'm. Not, I, I know exactly where you are. I know exactly what you're thinking. I know you think this is horrible and you should not be here. I get it. Yeah. I planned it. This is intentional. Mm. Everything that you're suffering through right now is intentional. I know exactly. I know exactly. I know exactly. So now listen to what the text said. I gotta drop this. I gotta drop this. Jesus tells him, you know what? Lazarus just sleep, man. And they're confused with him. And they looking at him. Sleep? Oh, okay, okay. He's asleep. We we think it. He's sleep. Jesus says, oh, listen to him. Listen to me. He is actually dead. Oh, this is so powerful. He he, he said he, he he is actually dead, but I'm calling it sleep. Mm -hmm. Cause I gotta be careful what I say. You know, you call it dead, but if my mouth says sleep, and it's going to be what my mouth said. Yeah. But physically, it can be dead, but my mouth in the spirit realm will still say it's just on reserve. <laughs> no, 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 what, no, this is so powerful for Jesus that his disciples couldn't catch what he was slinging. Listen to the 16th <laughs> verse said, then said Thomas. Now, you know, down Thomas. Here it is. Then said Thomas. He says, he says, which is called Didymus unto the, the the fellow disciples. Let us also go that we might die with him. Now listen to what Thomas trying to use some sarcasm that if Jesus says Lazarus was uh, asleep when we know that he's dead physically, let us go with him so that we might die also. Ooh, that's powerful. Here's what the Lord is saying. You're going to go through this death so confidently in God's power in you that other people are going to see that you are at rest even though you it seems you lost everything. Wow. It's going to be so powerful. This is why you got to have the confidence in God's power that even though everything is coming against you, they see you as resting. Mm. 
This is a season that you're going to be resting in the arm of, uh, arms of the Lord, even though everything possible is coming for your life. So much so that the fellow disciples are going to say, Whoa, look at him and look at how they're going through. They're trusting God through this whole process. Let us go and die from what we need to die from too, so we can get through this process as well. Are y'all still here with me? Are you still here? Are you still here with me? So here it is, here it is. Lazarus is dead, but he's resting. Mm. You're going to be dead, but you're going to rest because your confidence has got to be in God and in him alone. Don't you let someone talk you out of this moment. Don't you let, let, let me move on. Time is flying. I got to get this. I didn't even get to the other parts. Maybe that'll be a uh, Wednesday. Listen to me, people. Your death is on purpose. It's intentional. God is working something out in you. He's publicizing you. People are talking about you. This is the launching of your ministry. He's letting stuff die off that don't need to be there because he's about to bring something to life that needs to be there. People are talking about you. They're going to watch you go through because you're going to go through confidence in God resurrection power. Please hear me. He's going to resurrect what seems like is dead to everybody else. 19th verse says, now the people, this 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 family was such a notable family. Listen to this. This family was such a notable family. And it says that where they lived in Bethany was a little, just uh, not far from Jerusalem. And so all the people came to the house of, of Mary and Martha to console them. Mm -hmm. To console them. Please hear me. Please hear me because this is important. What are they doing? They're coming to console them because their brother is dead. Be very careful whom you let in your life in this space and time. Why? Because there are some people that's going to come to your house to try to make you uh, uh, comfortable with a death when God has planned the resurrection. Oh Don't let them come in and make you comfortable with a death when God is planning for a resurrection. And they'll do it. They'll tell you, oh, it's, it's all good. It's all good. Go ahead on and lay them away out of your sight so you won't have to worry about this. But if you know that God is purposely intended for this to happen, don't let good people come to your house and make you comfortable in a, in a, in a, in a current state because God is planning a resurrection for your life. Are you listening to me? Now, here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. First question Jesus asked, because he just told the disciples, let's go, let's go, let's go ahead on and work this. He's having an exchange with his sister. And she, he asked her the first thing. He says, uh, do you believe? Mm. I know we close. Listen, he's going to come to your house. I know, because text said, I love them. I love the family y'all sown seeds. But the first question he asked, you can sow seeds, we can be close, and I love you. That means I love you. Let me ask you something. Do you love me and believe me? I, you know I love, and I got the power to perform. But the first question I'm going to ask in this resurrected season do you believe? Do you believe? I ain't talking about you going to church. I ain't talking about how many church clothes you got. I ain't talking about how many seeds you sown. Ask, answer my question. Do you believe? Yes, I believe. Okay, do you believe that I'm going to resurrect? He's going to take you next level. First step, you believe? Yeah, Father, I believe you. Okay, that's good. Next level, do you believe that I can resurrect your brother? Here's the answer. Here's the answer. She says, yes, I believe I'm going to see him again, but it's going to be in the resurrection. He says there's a problem with that. Because you're still processing me from your old mindset. <laughs> they say, I'll see you again in the great by and by. He says, you don't understand what I'm trying to say. My God. How many times do he need to come to our space and declare to us, you're having devotions, but you don't know anything about what I am and what I do. You don't know anything. And so he says, do you believe that you see your brother uh, uh, in, 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 in a minute? All right. <laughs> She says, I see him in a minute. No, no. He says, no, no, I am. In other words, whenever I show up at your house, the timing is right for a miracle. You've been waiting like they've been waiting. You, you've been waiting because they said it's going to happen then. I'm telling you right now, like I told the band at the well, mm -hmm. at, the, at, at the pool called Bethesda. When I show up on the scene, I ask you a question. Don't give me a default answer. Don't say they said how they do it. I'm showing up right now. Jesus is telling the man, look up at me. Do you know who asking you this question? I don't I, I don't need you to say when an angel show up. The 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 king of kings has just shown up in oh, your man. life. Mm -hmm. If you want this miracle, just say yes and amen. So he's telling Martha, don't tell me a default answer about the resurrection. Do you know I am the resurrected? Your 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 intervention is standing in front of you. Now check this out. He has to explain as he explained it to you. Here's what he's saying. Here's what he's saying. Here's what he's saying. This is a dead situation. You didn't know that this was intentional to alleviate some things, to get rid of some things. This is not 
what they said it was. Hmm. This is not for your end. This is for your beginning. Now, then he prophesies something. He, he, here it is. He says, he says, he says, he says, listen to me. This is John chapter 12, verse 24, 25. Let me turn to that. I'm going to read that. I got to turn to it. John chapter 12, verse 24, 25. Here's what he's announcing to you right now. Uh, 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 uh. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you right now, those of you that are dead, and it seems like the situation is hopeless and is over with, and everybody talking about you. Here's what he said. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. Mm -hmm. This is why the death has it. And die. Check that out. And die. It abided alone. But if it agreed to die, it bringeth forth much fruit. This death is to bring a harvest into your life. Check out 25th verse. He that loveth his life currently, <laughs> the life that he thought was a good life because it's the life that they gave him, shall lose it. And he that hated his life, the current life that people say it was the life in this world, shall keep it until life eternal. In other words, I'm shifting you. I'm changing your mind. I had to let this thing die and fall into the ground because the thing that you've been living is not the thing I wanted you to live. The thing that you've been living is not the thing I wanted you to live. Mm. It was a good thing, but it's the thing that they gave you. So I got to let that thing die so I can bring you into the real thing. I got to get, I, I got to bring the purpose of God into your space. Now he says this to them. He says, where did you lay your dream? Mm. <laughs> Let me read you. The text said it. Y'all think I'm playing. Listen, listen. The 34th verse said, and he said, where have you laid him? Where have you laid him? That's what Jesus asked. Please hear me. Please hear me. Somebody say my sound went out. Are y'all still here? Are y'all still here? I'm, I'm going to keep it going. I'm going to keep it going. Listen, listen, listen. He says, where have you put your dream? Hmm. Where is it at? Where have you tucked it away at thinking that it was over? Where is it at? He's challenging you. Where have you stuck this thing? I'm here. I'm here. Where you stuck it at? I need to know. I need you to go pull this thing up. I need you to go pull this up. I need you to pull this I need you to pull it up. I need you to get this thing because this thing is not dead. Where is where is your dream? So he says, "Where y'all laid him at?" That's the question. You're going to have to participate in this season. Where have you put it? You thought it was dead. Now you know his intentions. There's an intent for this purpose that I placed in you that you tucked away and thought I delayed my coming. That means that I have denied you. Where is it at? Go dig it up right now. I need you to go get your dream and bring it forth. Now, he tells them, he says, I'm about to work a miracle in your life. I'm redefining myself. He says, but since it has taken so long, since you've gone through so many things, your heart has been hardened. Listen to me. Listen to me. Your heart has been hardened because you have been through so many things. Now, he tells them, where have you laid them? Where's the dream? Go pull it up again because I need to go over it with you because I'm about to intervene in your dream. And he says, your heart has been hardened because it has taken so long. He says to, to, to Mary and Martha and the people standing around, he says, I will work the miracle, but you are going to have to remove the stone. That's verse number 39. He says, take away the stone. Take away the hardness. Mm -hmm. Take away the things that you developed in the process of your waiting on me because you didn't know that I was coming. Take away all the hard places. This seed cannot fall on your stony ground of your heart. Mm -hmm. Open up, clear it up, because I'm going to do what I promise you. And the Bible says that he, once they remove the stone, he starts speaking the words that bring life. That's number three. Once you start taking away the stony places, he's going to release the words that bring life. What was the word? He says, Lazarus. Come for it. It's time for you to come alive. And not only in this season will you come alive, but notice what he said. He says he's alive, but I came that he have life and it more abundantly. What's next? Take everything that has been held in him bondage and cut it loose. This is the season that he's cutting away all of your grave clothes because this was not for you to be tucked away and put away. This was for a miracle of resurrection to be to be seen and to be shown. We went through the process. He allowed you to go through the process so that he could prove to the people that no matter what, he's going to intervene on your behalf. It might be last minute, it might be, it might not, uh, the, the, the song is, he might not come when you want him, but he's, 
Always on time. Well, I'm here to tell you, he's always last minute. Mm -hmm. He's that's all, he's all, and that's on time. He's yeah. always last minute, but he does show up in your space. Somebody needs to hear this today. You are right in the right place for a, and ready for a, res, res, a resurrection to happen in your life. This death is to bring publicly, bring you into the public space. People had to talk about you because God is about to intervene in your space. He's going to allow you to participate. The first question he's going to ask in this resurrection process is where have you laid the dream? Where have you laid the thing, the thing that people have despised that you say, I'm ashamed of it. Go get it. Pull it out because he's about to highlight that thing. He's about to 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 do a plant, a seed again into that ground. Remove the stone. Get rid of everything, every callus that is you caused to form on your heart because people didn't understand who you were. And they talked about you. They lied on you. They crucified you. Mm -hmm. But that's OK. Get ready because God is going to speak the words that bring life. He's about to say, come forth, come forth, come forth. Come forth, come forth. And as the text progresses, when Lazarus come forth, now Jesus is sitting in the place where people hated him. And everybody that hated him, some people start becoming defectors because they said, we've never seen a miracle. A miracle resurrection like this. So much so that their friends were angry at them because now look at this. Look at this. The very one that you've been talking about has done something that we never could do. God is highlighting you through the process. Everybody that talked about you said they possessed the power. They never brought anything for it that proved they had the power. And now God has used your debt to point everybody's attention toward him. Now they're going to know that God is a resurrector of dreams. And he's going to use the person that was dead. That's why you're dead. Because he needs somebody to resurrect. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you today for this word. I thank you for those that are hearing this word. I thank you for the opportunity to speak this word into the hearing of these people. I thank you today because you're bringing resurrection power. You're loosing them. You're loosing. They're finding the dream that they tucked away. They laid away. They're bringing it back because the, your power in this season is about to speak life. It's going to fall on good ground in this season. And you're about to loose them and let them go. Cut away everything that have been holding them in bondage. You love them. Yes, you love them. You love them. And you will. You will do what you said for them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, you are free to go live life at the level of God. Up your asking. Up your asking. Up your, the delay of Christ in this Lazarus situation was because he says, Lord, they seen me heal sick. They seen me walk on water, but they never seen me raise the dead. And I can't come until Lazarus has died so I can prove them that you have resurrection power. Because the last enemy to be conquered anyway is death. Once you go ahead on and die, they can never bring that indictment on you again anyway. Because you cannot affect the dead man. Hmm. They don't care. Dead people don't care what you say about it. I don't get what you put on. God is so good. Amen. 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 For those of you that want to sow into this seed today, cash app in OBC. I think you stuck it in there. Dude. I did. I don't have the, the capabilities of seeing nobody that's online. I'm scared to touch my device because it shut me off one time and I didn't want to be shut off again because I had to release this word into somebody hearing. I got some people right now, right now, that you are stepping up. You are stepping up. You are stepping up. You are stepping up. This step up season. So blessings, 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 and more blessings to all of you. Everybody that's in the house, uh, uh, blessings to you. If I didn't call your name out, uh, please. I'm trying to. I'm trying to see who all it is. Uh, uh, who's who's in the house? Who's in the house? Thank you, thank you, guys. Uh, Pastor Melinda Downing, Pastor Deidre. Thank you guys so much for being here. Priscilla, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, my sister Sheila's in the house. Happy anniversary to you and Henry. Rayan, uh, Rayan. Thank you. Uh, 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 Andrea Bunting. Thank you. Ebony Washington. Thank you so much. Yolanda McDaniel. Benjamin Perry. Thank you so much. Our Nico Harris. Thank you so much. Eva. Sonia. Sonia. Sunshine Davis. Thank you so much. Uh, Charles Bailey, thank you. Catherine Priscilla, thank you. J.F. Smith, thank you. Harlot Scott, Harriet Scott, Harlot Scott, Harriet Scott, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All of you. Deborah Shade, thank you, thank you. All of you guys, thank you so much. Sharon Butler, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sylvia Davis, Victor Johnson, thank you guys so much. Raquel Bates, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Leah, happy birthday. Happy birthday to Leah. Happy birthday to you. Yesterday, right? 
Custom Smithfield. She's a she's a member of Network of Believers. Yeah. She lives in San Francisco, yeah, yeah. California. Harold Marshall, thank you. Brenda Parks, Adrian Jordan, Rhonda Hall, thank you so much. Uh, uh, who else? Who else? Uh, Jessica, happy birthday to Jessica Green. Yeah, yeah. Happy birthday, Jessica. Marissa, Pastor Marissa, thank you. Pastor Nolan, thank you. Uh, Renee Devonford, thank you so much. Dana Marshall, uh, Pastor Joe Tallamore, love you guys. Love you guys so much. Thank you. This is Monday. You might as well kick this Monday off. Uh, 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 right, right, right. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm going to give you an instruction. I'm out of here. At Network, we, this is prayer week for us because we're getting prompts from God that perhaps we looked over before. Here's an instruction from yesterday. Get your paper. Get your pen, get your marker. I need you to write it big. I need you to write out things that you have requested of the Lord. Put it down on the paper. As an act of obedience, what's going to happen? You're going to be able to check out all, check off those things. You're going to see God intervening on your behalf, and you're going to be able to check off these things. Get ready for this to happen because God is using you, as he did Lazarus, to publicize his glory. He's going to get glory, but he's going to use you as the instrument. Get ready to have some things happening one after the other so that God can get glory out of your life. He's putting you on front street. Don't deny God's power to put you on front street because he's about to intervene vein on front street this death is for glory <laughs> all right all right we're out of here because i'm i don't need to start preaching again uh, uh thank you so much for tuning in if you will even after this is over go share this with a couple people and you know it's going through and they're going through horrifically right now and they don't know what they're going to do tell them god loves them and he's allowed them to go through a public situation because he's about to publicize their blessing holla